So I am doing your monthly forecast a little bit different this month. I'm off camera because I've been under the weather for a while and actually these videos are extremely late which I apologize for but I had some mercury retrograde technical difficulties of course. Mercury retrograde is in my third house of communication and electronic devices so when I recorded these videos previously, they recorded with no audio, so I had to go back and redo everything. So once again, I apologize for the delay in these, and once again, don't forget to look at the videos for every sign of yours, your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign. And also, I'm still having a sale through the end of December on all of my readings. Go to my website, which is indigomoonastrology.com, and there's also a link below to that website, and there should be one on the little I button up above as well, to where you can go order a discounted reading that's only a temporary discounted price, like I said, through the end of December, and in January, my rates will go up, so take advantage of that sale now, especially if you would like to buy a gift for a loved one, the gift of a reading of their astrology chart. It makes an excellent gift, and also if you would like a 2017 personal forecast for yourself, those are selling right now too, as well as a six-month forecast for the first six months of 2017. So once again, go to my website, indigomoonastrology.com, and stay tuned for your December 2016 forecast. All right, Cancers, so my cute little pink astrology chart board is back. And this time I have different lighting and a different camera, so hopefully it's a lot more clear to see than it was last month. So what's going on for you guys? Um, first of all, I apologize for the delay. I had recorded these videos already, and then um, I discovered that they were having no audio on them so thanks mercury retrograde joy but i've got the issue fixed so here we are i am a little bit under the weather so i apologize for the manly voice but anyways what's going on with my cancer boo boos so first of all um the first planetary change that happened in december was on december 3rd mercury the planet of communication and logic and our thinking processes and uh, short distance uh, traveling went into the sign of Capricorn. So for you guys, that's your seventh house of relationships. So Cancers, this month, this whole month, Mercury will be in Capricorn and you guys will really be thinking and talking a lot more about your relationships or a lot more with your relationship partners. Since this is, uh, Mercury is actually in shadow period at the beginning of the month, goes into retrograde on the 19th, and will be in shadow and in retrograde and all that stuff through January, you may be going back over some things in your relationship, revising your relationship, reviewing it to make it better. Um, so it's an excellent time to do that. Going back in time and in memory with your partner, if you are in a relationship, is a really good thing to do. What I would say to be careful of is um, going back into times of negativity with your partner and oh remember when you did this a long time ago and you really hurt my feelings it's like really <laughs> are we trying to move ahead here in this relationship so don't get caught up in that cancer and also pluto has been here transforming your relationships since 2008 and when mercury's there your thinking can be a lot more deeper about relationships and also it can bring out more jealousy and possessiveness um you can be popping up on your partner like, what are you doing? No, what are you looking at in your phone? What are you really up to? Try to avoid too much of that. But definitely talks about relationships are um, going to be an important thing for you guys this month. Or if you're not in a relationship, you can be attracting more partners to you, that, or, I mean potential partners that want to talk to you and everything. Or just people in general will be very talkative towards you and, you know, a lot more coming up to you wanting to converse with you and things like that. Mercury retrograde and then shadow and all that stuff in your seventh house of relationships can bring back old partners. Okay, so they may be trying to contact you on social media, trying to call you, trying to text you and all that stuff. And the majority of cancers I know are horrible with their phones and communication anyway. They don't even have messenger. They don't answer anything. So... You guys may be good there <laughs> with being able to block the exes. 
But for the cancers that really are good with communication, you may have exes trying to come back, contact you. Hey, do you remember what we had a long time ago, cancer? Yeah, um, if it was in the past, the past is the past, okay? Cancer energy can get caught up in and hold on to the past a lot more than some other signs. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but try not to get caught up in the past this month with Mercury there. Now, on the 8th of, sorry, on the 8th of December, uh, Venus, the planet that rules relationships and enjoyment of life and beauty and uh, just the physical human experience and enjoying that. Um, Venus will be, come on, autofocus, hello. Okay, whatever, forget it. But this is Venus, okay? Venus um, is moved into Aquarius. And Venus will be in Aquarius this whole month of December. This is your eighth house. Okay, the eighth house is very deep soul bonding, which cancers, you guys are a water sign, you're intuitive, you're sensitive. You're all about the deep soul bond when you have somebody that you trust. So this is an opportunity to really bond with your partner. You may be craving more of that time to cuddle and talk. I mean, talk about real deep subjects, not just surface level. How was your day? What's the weather? What's the sports stats? No, you may want to really talk about like, life and reflection upon relationship in a positive way and remember the good times you know with a partner that you already have and you're established with and it can be very good for just really bonding with another person so venus will be there through the whole month of december so on the 14th of the month we have a full moon in the sign of gemini and this is when the sun and the moon are opposing one another they're in opposite signs and they bring things to a final decision. They bring a breakthrough. They bring like a frustration to where you're finally like, I can't take this anymore. I got to change something in this particular area of my life. So the moon is in Gemini and you guys are ruled by the moon. So full moons, no matter what sign, no matter what house they land in, they're very important for you and bring really big changes and lots of emotion, lots more emotion than you guys already have. So moon in gemini for you guys is your 12th house that's where the change will be made and um the sun will be in sagittarius which is your sixth house of um your daily routines your work environment how you take care of yourself all that stuff so there's a push pull here there's an opposition here something's got to give when it comes to how hard you've been working especially since you guys have had saturn the planet of hard work and discipline in your work environment since last year 2015 making you work a lot harder maybe some of you guys have obtained um positions of authority and in your work environment or just harder jobs with a lot more harder duties and things like that and then um the sun comes here and it shines a light in this area so maybe you guys have been working 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 very hard but then here's the 12th house, which is not working. It's the opposite. It's taking care of yourself, taking time out to have me time, alone time, taking time to relax and release, especially because cancers, you guys are a water sign. Water collects a lot within it, okay? It can collect a lot of garbage. And for you guys as humans, a lot of emotional garbage. That means other people may dump their problems on you and you make it your own and you want to help and you care so much about other people. You collect all this emotional crap, right? So this is a house of release, the 12th house. So this will bring you to a point where you feel like you got to release something, okay? You got to let something go. You got to let some problems go because the sixth house is also the house of problem solving and seeing um, all the little details of every little thing that needs to be fixed sometimes to the point of being too much of a worry wart and worrying so much so this is the house of not worrying letting it go so around the 14th some of my cancers you guys may come to a conclusion that you know what i really need to take time out for myself i really need to not worry so much about other people's problems i really need to relax i need to take a vacation something you know or just close off in my shell be in my bed you know, and just read some books, watch some TV, be in my PJs, this cancery stuff I enjoy doing. I may need to do that for a little while, um, you know, and let go of some stuff. So that's what this full moon in Gemini on the 14th may bring to you. Now, on the 20th of the month, we have Mars. 
sorry. Ooh, Mars, he is really the planet of action. This fool is jumping around everywhere, <laughs> all crazy. So Mars, the planet of action, as you saw, and initiative and aggression and um, really charging after things. Mars moves from Aquarius, which is your eighth house, into fellow water sign Pisces, which is your ninth house. So Mars being in Pisces, Mars being in a fellow water sign, um, since it's a, your element, your fellow water element, it does give you a, a good boost of energy here to be able to accomplish some things, especially some goals, because that's what the ninth house rules, your goals. Seeing the world outside of your little bubble, which cancers, um, ten, oh, here's the black moon, oh, gee, Louise. Cancers, you guys can tend to sometimes live in your own little bubble. You know, you're comfortable there. You're comfortable in your shell and what you're familiar with and all that stuff. But when Mars is there, you may feel like stepping out of your shell and out of your comfort zone, maybe traveling further away from home than you've ever been before, okay? Because Pisces is also the energy of far, far away lands, okay? And, and um, escapism to like really distant places. So some of my cancers may be planning some trips or really actually going on some trips and exploring the world. The ninth house is totally about exploring the world, okay? So it's seeing the world as being yours. Also, if some of my cancers are involved in education, this can be some extra energy towards really accomplishing things um, within that area of life, which is, yeah, your, your educational pursuits. Like if you're trying to go to college or trying to finish your GED or your diploma or whatever, this is going to give you an extra boost. And just in general, like I said, because you're a water sign, Pisces is a water sign, bam, energy, physical energy, maybe towards working out, getting out and hiking, doing adventurous stuff. Those are all good things for you guys to do this month, Pisces. I mean, a cancer once Mars moves into Pisces. So on the 21st, the sun will move from Sagittarius, which is your sixth house of work and health and everything into Capricorn, which is your seventh house of relationships because it's your opposite sign. So what does that mean? Well, we've already got Mercury there, and by that time, Mercury is going to go retrograde. So the sun definitely will help you, thank goodness, to see things a lot clearer where um, Mercury retrograde will make things a little murky and unclear, okay? So you, like I said, maybe going back over relationship stuff and the sun there, will shine a big light in there and help you to look around this relationship area and see what needs to be fixed, what is good, what's bad, what needs improvement, you know, what is, is going right in your relationship. You will see all of those things. And then Mercury will have you communicating about them. But remember, he's, uh, he's retrograde, so may cause a little confusion sometimes. Now, if you're not in a relationship and when the sun is in the seventh house, you may feel like getting in a relationship. You'll feel the warmth, which is the sun, in that area like, oh, I wish I had someone to partner up with. You know, I wish I had company, um, somebody to go out to the movies with, somebody to chill with me at home in jammies and watch Netflix with. I'm really craving that, the warmth of the company of another person. But remember, Mercury retrograde, there can be miscommunications there. Um, in regards to where a relationship stands, okay? So just keep that in mind. Around the 25th, we're going to have Saturn and Sagittarius in your sixth house here, um, making a trine, which is a positive aspect, to Uranus and Aries, which is in your 10th house of career. So Uranus is the planet of shaking things up where things have gone a little stale, let's just say. So if any of my cancers, you're feeling in career like things are going stale, I mean, with Uranus being there in Aries in your career house um, for several years now, and he will be there until um, another year, year and a half or so, I have to double check on that, but he's still going to be there for a while. You guys have probably already been feeling the buzz of static electricity of Uranus. You know, he's probably been throwing lightning bolts into your career field, making you suddenly change your direction in career, get bored within career, have these like what I call, and uh, a friend of mine actually, another astrologer calls Uranian outbreaks. I got that from her. Shout out to Apollonia. <laughs> but Uranian outbreaks, so where you just feel like, oh, this area of life is giving me the heebie-jeebies. I'm about to break out in hives if I don't change something. So that's Uranus energy. And he's been in your career house 
for several years, okay? Now, with him making a positive aspect to Saturn in your workhouse, there can be a positive, like, sudden breakthrough that happens that changes your work environment and changes your direction and career. So this is around the 25th that this comes to its exact peak. Now, on the 27th, we have Uranus in Aries in your 10th house of career opposing Jupiter in Libra in your 4th house of home and family life. So there could be a shakeup in career, um, and then it, it does affect your home and family life. Jupiter is a very positive energy, a very, very positive influence in your life. So it could be a positive change. Um, or Jupiter is also a magnifying glass, so it can magnify if there's any issues within your home. Maybe um, career, you're like, I need to change my career. Bam, you change your career. Maybe it doesn't pay as well as you were getting paid before. So now you got to change your residence. You got to change where you live. Or it could be the opposite. Maybe suddenly you get a bomb career that pays really well. And Jupiter down here expanding your home life. Hey, you can actually expand your home, like move to a bigger house. So those are just a couple of different scenarios that can be brought about. And then on the 29th, Uranus goes direct. Uranus has actually been retrograde for several months. And then when it goes direct, you can then proceed with, with any changes that actually, um, you know, were zapped within your career life and within your family life. Now, also on the 29th, we have a new moon in the sign of Capricorn. So um, what that means is the sun and moon, the mama and the papa, they come together, they birth something new. Cancers, you know all about giving birth to new things because you're the sign of the mom, the nurturer, the lover of babies, okay? So something brand new can pop up within your relationships. Maybe you decide to take things to the next level in a relationship or maybe you decide to let something go because new moons can be about release to welcome in brand new. So if you're in a toxic relationship, here you discover your boo-boo was cheating on you because you went back over some things you discovered some stuff uncovered some information because mercury's retrograde you decide you know what boo psh, i gotta let you go okay because i don't play that like i'm loyal i'm faithful like you know you're not so psh, peace out or it can be that you know you've been chatting it up with somebody for a minute you guys finally decide to make it official Venus hanging out in the 8th house can help you to really get to know that person on an intimate level and sweeten things up within this relationship. One last thing, okay? On the 31st, which is New Year's Eve in the Western world, Mars and Neptune will be together. So these two guys will be hanging out together, okay? So if Mars is action and Neptune is dissolvement and it's like escaping reality and... That escaping reality can actually mean um, in negative ways, like through drugs, through alcohol, through substances. Um, just a fair warning to everybody, no matter what sign you are, but um, everybody can be affected in this way to where they want to take some actions that are like completely ridiculous and out of this world. So I would say be very careful partying if you go out for New Year's Eve. Be mindful of others and their actions too, okay? Because people may be drinking and just being completely out of control. Uh, maybe, you know, getting high and just like not knowing what they're doing. So be careful driving cancer. Be careful if you are actually a cancer that gets out and it's not home cozy in your shell on New Year's Eve. Just be careful. And also this is happening for you in your ninth house. The ninth house is all about having a good time and not worrying about tomorrow. So you guys in particular may be affected in that way where you don't really feel like there's any consequences to your actions. You want to have a good time. You know, you get drunk, you get high or something, and you just, woo, and then bam, like something stupid will happen, okay? So just be very careful with this energy on the 31st and look out for other idiots around you doing idiotic stuff that's out of control. All right, so that was it, Cancer. Thank you so much for your patience. Um, once again, I apologize for the delay, and I hope you guys have a great month and a happy new year.